Hello fellow cinephiles, Film Guru here. Today I'm going to look at the particular new series that I've been really hooked on and really loved, Ash vs Evil Dead. Now there are only three seasons in this series and each episode is about 20-25 minutes and it's created by um, Sam Raimi's executive producer because he did the original film obviously and his two brothers are involved in it as well. Ted, Ted Raimi appears in a particular episode and and only plays a character who played in the original film. And it's also produced and written by Ivan Raimi, Sam Raimi's brother, and Tom Spisley. And it really looks at Ash, once again, 30 years after the original films. The last 30 years avoiding responsibility, maturity, and the terrors of the evil dead until a de deadite plague threatens to destroy all of mankind and Ash becomes mankind's only hope. And ultimately, Bruce Campbell reprises the role of Ash. And he's still the same. Bruce Campbell's fantastic in this. He's like he was in the original films, but this is really interesting to see him as an older guy trying to do the same sort of things. And he's very, very humorous and does some fantastic moments, has some fantastic moments in this film. And joining him is Ray San Diego and Ana De Lorenzo, who play ultimately Pablo and Kelly. And it also has Lucy Lawless in it, playing a particular character named Ruby, which you find out a lot about as the film goes on, and she's quite quite an interesting character within the series. What I really loved about this is it took a film or films, it sort of follows on from the first one but it has bits of the second and this talk about the third film within this particular series as well. And But what I really liked is it's we're thrown back into this world. Ash is still Ash, he hasn't changed one bit, he's still that particular character we saw in the original films, he still only has one, arm, one hand and he still has a chainsaw that he hooks to it and the shotgun and all that sort of stuff and even the uniform so to speak or the clothes that became his ultimate uniform. And to me what the series does, which I think is really well done, is it takes a movie or movies and ultimately makes a series out of it and does it in such a brilliant sort of way that really suits the material that they're working with. And this is, should be the archetype of what they can do with other particular movies that I really think could be turned into TV series as well. And how they should be ultimately done in this particular vein. Because I think what this series really does really well is it introduces you to the character, but it also gives you a bit of backstory of things. We get to meet, you know, he's got other characters around him this time fighting particular deadites and evil. And they form a really strong bond and family. But you ultimately learn quite a bit about who Ash is along the way. And there's particular moments within the series where you get to see his backstory a little bit. There's season two takes place wholly and solely within the town that he grew up in. Ultimately, the next part of this review is going to be spoilers. So if you haven't seen this series, maybe you should stop watching now because I'm going to go into a few spoilers and particular things to try and talk about what I need to talk about for this series. So if you don't want to be spoiled in it, then leave now and check out the series. For those who have seen it, I'll continue. Like I said, in particular season two, he goes back to the town that he grew up in. And he's, he's known as sort of a crazy person here because he ultimately went to this cabin with his sister and, and his friends and his girlfriend and they all and he had to kill them all. So the whole town thinks he's crazy. They all think he's just some sort of serial killer psycho and that's ultimately when he packed up things and left and never returned. And this is the first time he's returning to his hometown in 30 years. And his father's still there this time, and his father's played by Lee Majors in a really fantastic, fun way. And I just thought that was interesting, the backstory to that. We go back to the cabin a couple of times within the series, and they use it in quite an interesting way. We even go, there's even time traveling, they go back in time and we get to see the cabin the way it was, and we get to learn things that we didn't know previously in the films. And I think that was really fantastic execution of that. And this is a kind of series that does really well like that because in the movies they talk about things but never show them but the series is able to expand on that and show these things that they've talked about which I think is absolutely brilliant. There's a lot of films out there like that I think they could do the same thing with. Gothica that starred Halle Berry I think that could be a really great and interesting TV series as well and they can just evolve and expand on the things that were introduced and shown previously. And this series really does that. I love every moment of this series. Because, yes, it is gory and violent. There are moments where he cuts people in half with the chains or blows their head off with a shotgun. Or this particular really full-on deaths where someone uses a meat slice to cut a person and beat them with a um, meat tenderizer. But 
besides all the gore, it's really fun and funny and entertaining. And I think that's what makes it really a great show to watch. And that's what I got swept into. I'm not a big fan of blood and a lot of you know, buckets of blood and gore and stuff like that. But when it's done in a humorous way like this, it's sort of, I can accept it and enjoy it for what it is. And, and this film really delivers on that in many, many aspects and many things. And I really love what this series has ultimately been able to do. And what I, I love the fact that Bruce Campbell and Lucy Law, Lawless are both in this, and they haven't really been on screen together since Xena when Bruce Campbell used to pop on a variety of roles within that series playing a particular thief. So it's good to see these two working together again. And Bruce Campbell is absolutely amazing in this series. I love everything he does. He's very humorous, very funny. He has some great one-liners. And he is the character and the hero, the reluctant hero that, we, that we've met in the movies. And he's still the same person, which I really loved. And I thought they did a great job with that. I love that Ted Raimi's in it, playing particular couple of roles within the series, like he did in the particular early films. And I love that Sam Raimi directed the pilot episode. It was like getting the band back together, as they say in the Blues Brothers. It was everybody who made these particular movies so successful coming back and working together again. It's kind of an exciting series as well. You don't know where it's going. It goes from one direction to another, and it keeps you guessing right till the end. And the, the season finals are really interesting as well and how they ultimately pick up for a next season. And like I said, there is only three seasons of the series. I wish there was more because I've absolutely been enjoying it thoroughly and love every aspect of it. In one particular episode called Delusion, I think, within season two, he ultimately gets locked in this mental institution by this particular character. And he has his own ash puppet that talks to him and tries to kill him with his own little chainsaw. It's absolutely fantastic. The use of that particular puppet is fantastic. I think Pablo is a really great character within this. He's sort of of Mexican descent. But he's sort of this really interesting character who looks up to Ash and just falls into this particular world. And he's joined by Kelly, who is absolutely brilliant in this series. And as the series goes along, she gets better and better and more interesting character. And it's like these three band together to stop evil. And then you throw in Ruby, Lucy Lawless's character, who's just sort of pain in the ass ultimately a lot of the time. And you're not quite sure who she is or what she wants or what she's trying to achieve within the series. But you learn more about her as it goes along. And it sort of keeps going back to things we hadn't seen before. It talks about the particular archaeologist who found this, the Book of the Dead, and how he used it, and how things were formed. And we get to see things transpire within the house in, in a time travel episode of how things took place within the movies. And I really loved that. And we got to see much more of what was transpiring. There's even an episode where the, the actress who played Ash's sister comes back, which I think she's brilliant in and does a fantastic job. It's like they're pooling their resources, like I said, getting the band back together, getting all these interesting actors and characters from the original films and putting them in this film in a particular way, which I absolutely love. What I think is interesting and works well too with this particular series is the episode length. They're only 25 minutes and most of the time they take place in one location. In the first season, there's a lot of traveling. They go from place to place. Um, one episode might be completely in a diner, one might be in a military compound or in the forest. It, it can be um, in someone's house, and could be anything like that. And it's fascinating how they keep these episodes so interesting with only one location for that short period of time. But you get swept up in it, you don't even notice what's going on a lot of the time. You just go with what's happening. Season 2 takes, completely, takes place completely in Elk's, Elk Grove, where ashes from and it completely takes place there so each episode involves a particular house or a particular place within that and there's a really great police station episode which reminded me of Justin Bellow from Supernatural and and also reminded me of John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13 and I kind of like that it was set in there with all these group of characters and there's a, a deadite there but you don't know which one it is and I kind of really like that I think this series really is fantastic and there should be more series like this. There's another horror film called John Dies in the End and I think this would really make a really great TV series and work in the same vein that this series is doing and it could really open up a lot of horror series and do this sort of thing and do something different and able to take movies and turn them into TV series. Final verdict. Look, if you're a fan of the movies, you'll absolutely love the series. If you like sort of horror comedy based series or movies, this is definitely for you. 
it adds so much more to the movies that we learn little bits about and expands the characters and the world and we get to see a lot more transpire which I absolutely thought was brilliant within this series. It's definitely a highlight, it's definitely a series for me I will go back to and I love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I'm going to give Ash vs Evil Dead seasons 1, 2, 3, I'm going to give all of them 4.5. I think it is a brilliant series, but I would like to see other movies done in this particular vein, especially horror movies like John Dies in the End and things like that. I haven't had quite this much fun with a TV series in quite a while. Anyway, that's all from me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit subscribe down the bottom. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.